All right, so our next lab is capacitors in series. When some electronic components are series, they're piggybacked one to another. So in other words, this yellow one is connected to this blue one, and it's piggybacked to the black one like this. Now I can use lots of connectors, but a, a very common thing to use is something called a breadboard. This is a breadboard, not food type, this is electronic type. So up here you can put like a, a, a you can put IC chips in this little trough in here. Uh, is, is, is just the right width to put an IC chip in, but we're gonna just do work up here. So how this works is that all of the columns are electrically connected. The rows are isolated. So I'm gonna make them go in one direction. I'm, go, I'm gonna put all the indentations on the left. That'll be positive. Okay, so I'm gonna stick these ends into the breadboard. There's one, okay. Then, uh, then I'm just gonna randomly put them in one. Stick them in. Ugh. Make sure it goes all the way in. Uh, do you see that little black dot right there? That's when one of my students blew out a resistor. <laughs> I mean, sorry, capacitor or resistor. They blow out resistors too. All right, so here's the black one. What I'm going to do is put it in the same column as this one, but in a different spot. Obviously, you can't put two in the same spot. So I'm going to put that up here. As long as it's right above or below it, you're going to have it electrically connected. And the dimple is pointing towards the left. And then I'm just going to randomly stick it somewhere over here. It doesn't really matter where. Then my third one, again, the dimple to the left, I'm going to put that in a column or row right above it. So it doesn't really matter. Just stick it in. Just make sure they're in the same column. And there we go. I'm just going to stick it over there. Just So I have now three capacitors in series. So these two, these two ends are electrically connected. These two ends are electrically connected, and the ends are not electrically connected. So I'm going to take my multimeter, and I'm going to measure, I have some multimeter, well, my capacitance meter. It's really not a multimeter. Multimeters measure more than one thing. Uh, this is a capacitance meter only. So I'm going to measure from one end. Oops, that's, yeah, that's the positive end, and this is the negative end. So the left end's positive and the, and the right end's negative. Okay, you ready? Let's go see. 108.3 microfarads. 108.3 microfarads. So when you put capacitors in series, you're gonna get a smaller capacitance than either of them. Uh, remember, it's because one over the equivalent capacitance in series is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3. So to find the, calculate the value that it should be, take one over this, and remember, use the measured values, not what it says on here. I know this is, says it's 330. Don't use one over 330, use one over, and I, I can't remember what it was, but just remember what the measured value is. Look back in your data sheet, take one over this, one over, plus one over that, plus one over that. That's gonna be equal to one over the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So once you find a one over this, you add it to one over this, and then you add that to one over this. Then you flip everything over to find the equivalent capacitance of the whole circuit. And it should be equal to the, the value we just wrote down. My meter just turned off here. Uh, 180 point something, right? 108, 108.3, I think that's what we said. Then you find the percent difference between this value and your calculated values. So now what we're going to do in the next video is do capacitors in parallel.